Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and this is the Mercedes-Benz NG4436, and yes, I did have to say that over and over a couple of times to myself to actually make sure I remembered it correctly. Now, some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, the title says that this is console-friendly, but there's a big old Mercedes badge on the front. How is it console-friendly? Well, the creator of this mod was actually really, really smart and only included the branding in the PC files. So if you download this vehicle on PC, it has all of the branding and things like that. But if you download it on console, of course, once it's approved, it won't have any of that branding on it. And in fact, it will have a alternate form of branding, meaning that you basically have the PC files with the branding and then the console files without the branding as part of the same mod, which is really, really smart. Now, I didn't know what this truck actually was when I initially saw it on the mod browser, and so I, being curious about trucks, googled it. And literally the first thing that popped up when I googled this truck was a for sale listing for one of these, and I believe it was available in... Oh, I'm trying to remember where, was it, where it was available, like, for sale at. I want to say the for sale ad was for somewhere in Belgium, and I was like, okay, that's a really sick looking truck. I kind of want it, but you know what? I, first of all, I feel like registering it here in the States would be uh, a bit challenging, and the shipping would probably be astronomically <laughs> expensive. But, nonetheless, I really, really like this truck. I've always loved this particular style of trucks, and we're going to go ahead and get it into the garage. We're going to customize it, we're going to see what we can do with it, and then we're going to take it out and take it for a little bit of a test run. And also... If I may recommend, as a companion add-on to this truck, I definitely recommend grabbing the MS trailer pack as well. So let's fire it up. Now, I believe that these trucks in the real world, I believe, had a couple of different... Well, maybe not a couple, but at the very least... Oh, dude, look at that. All the working gauges and everything. That's sick. Now, as far as real-world engine options go, I know that the one I looked up had a V10 engine. Although, those of you that know these trucks a little bit better than I do can let me know what the other engine options that were offered were in the comments down below. So let's go into the engine options. we got the LAZ-8T... Oh my god. LAZ... 8T260, and I'm not going to say the rest of those numbers and letters because sheesh, and then we got the T290 and the 330T, we'll do the 330T, that actually gets us up to a S power to weight rating, which for a freaking 8x8 like this, pretty dang respectable. Now let's do, we'll start off with the fine-tuned transmission, um, we do have a little bit of a lift kit, which is good, and then let's try the, ooh, interesting, so I figured that these were going to be a little bit more of a highway tire, they're actually not, they are a all-terrain tire. Now we've got the RNG ones, oh dude, these look great, we've got the, so we've got them in 45, we've also got them in 48, man, oh these look so good. Bro, I really like, I really like these actually, the RNG3s, they're basically a big old super single, and I think they really give a lot of like, they really make this thing look like it was built to be used in the middle of nowhere, uh, in the middle of like, let's say like a, you know, like a construction site or a mining scenario or like hauling giant pieces of lumber in and out of the woods, uh, that, that would definitely be one to go with. We've also got these, which these are the only ones that are classified as mud tires, which is very interesting actually let's see their mud rating is 2.8 these are 2.0 and these are oh i see okay so these are 2.0 in the mud these are 1.5 in the mud these are back to a 2.0 again those are 2.0 and then these are 2.8 so these are technically going to be the best performing in mud out of all the tires on the list then we've got these which are actually 2.2 in the mud but they're also rated as excellent on ice so we'll grab these actually then we'll do an advanced medium winch diff lock is already pre-installed snorkel kit is definitely going on there because we're going to need that and then this obviously this this is part of a mod. This is not included with this truck, although it does fit if you want to use it. And then you have the log carrier, which honestly, like, if you're planning on using this truck for logging, I think it would be a really good truck to use for it because think about it. You've got 
eight by eight, you know, eight wheel drive. You've got giant 48 inch tires. You can go in and out of whatever muddy, slushy lumber area that you'd like. And I think it would be a really good truck to actually use for logging. Now, we've also got a flatbed option. We've got a short logging frame, sideboard bed, articulated towing platform, IM50 loading crane. That really, that will actually be really, really helpful if you plan on using this as like a semi truck or something like that. If you so happen to tip it over, you can recover your own cargo and you'll be good to go. Now, this one actually seems to fit it a little bit better, especially with the color scheme of the frame. you got a custom-looking sideboard bed. We've got an equipment tower with uh, repair parts and everything on there. That's sick. Saddle high and saddle low. Let's throw the equipment tower on it. And, well, actually, you know what? Mm, I'm back and forth, actually. You know what? We'll do this uh, IM50 loading crane. And that IM50 loading crane can actually fit with the two-slot cargo bed. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do... Uh, we're actually... I think we're going to do saddle low. Well... I'm back and forth on that. I'm back and forth on that. We will let the game install the appropriate hitch for whatever trailer we pick. That sounds like the best way to do this. Now, raised beacons. I may as well go ahead and put them on there. Then interior. Whoa. Okay, so you can actually take the Mercedes-Benz logo, like, in and out of the steering wheel. That's kind of neat. Then front bumper-wise, you got bumper one, bumper one with a bar, and then bumper two. I'm going to stick with bumper one because I think it really highlights the front end of the truck. Then miscellaneous. Whoa! So here you can actually change the badges around. That's super neat. Side wind deflectors. What? Okay. And then let's see. Wide or normal fenders. Number plate. Oh, dude. This is so in-depth. Th this is, like, actually ridiculously in-depth on the customization. Now, let's see. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and install that exhaust. It's really our only option for exhausts, anyway. Um, we'll stick with these wheels. I think they definitely suit the truck the best. We've got a couple of different color options. Not a huge list, but I wouldn't really expect a truck like this in real life, anyway, to have a dramatic amount of color options. And I think that the nice, like, faded, weathered paint really fits into the kind of overall color scheme of the trucks in SnowRunner as well. Or not really the color scheme, but the overall aesthetic. So I'm thinking that we'll probably go with a nice... I like the bright white, actually. The brighter white actually looks really good. So Beans is gonna go up there on the dash, and then now it's time to take this thing to the trailer store and grab a trailer that I think will work for kind of the, the overall... Uh, the overall lineup of jobs you would normally do with a truck like this. I don't know why that sentence was so difficult for me to get out, but <laughs> for some reason it was. Now that, uh, that dual steering in the front, the steering being available on both front axles, I think it's gonna help you dramatically with, uh, mobility as well. So we've got a long log semi-trailer. Let's see, what kind of other semi-trailers do we have? Oh, dude, the fuel semi-trailer would be awesome for this thing. Now as we go down the list, what do we have as far as, let's see, semi-trailer for medium logs, let's see, semi-trailer for short logs, so you could double up on your short logs if you wanted to, trailer for long logs, okay, so it's not too bad, yeah, not too bad at all. I'm actually wondering if we should grab a, oh, dude, sideboard eight slot semi, that's freaking nuts, bro, I'll tell you what. We'll do this. We'll do this. I really think that the uh, the long log semi trailer will be a good one to test this thing out with because I personally would really be using this a lot in logging scenarios. So let's see. Log planks. Where is the garbage? <laughs> All right. Long logs. Let's go. Oh, this will be a perfect way to test this thing out. Perfect way. And I don't know why, but for me, I just see this as a. And you could use it for anything. You could use it to haul whatever you wanted, but I just, I see it as a truck that would work really well for logging. I mean, it has a, it has a vanilla game quality level interior. It's got working mirrors. This is one of those trucks that if you play, if you play this game entirely in interior view, you could use this and enjoy it at like it was meant to be in the game in the first place. It really feels like it was meant to be in the game in the first place. And even with the fully upgraded engine and everything that comes along with it doesn't feel over the top doesn't feel overpowered it feels like everything w about it was meant to be here out of the gate like literally out of the get-go so let's see wow that is an incredible looking truck like that again that right there looks like a promotional shot for a dlc pack like does it not i mean it really to me anyway it does. It really does look like a promotional shot for a DLC pack because it just looks so fitting. It looks like it's supposed to be here. 
Now, even though the diff lock is only available in low range, it doesn't feel like it struggles at all, even with the diff lock off. I mean, we went through that entire river without the diff lock, and it really never even spun even once. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about it in the sense that, well, it doesn't have diff lock all the time. I don't think this thing needs the diff lock on all the time. That thing rips without it. Now, I obviously was not going to go up the hill climb back there because that hill climb is kind of ridiculous to do <laughs> with a trailer this long. You'd be kind of loony to attempt that, uh, that hill climb with a trailer this long. With that being said, I can be a bit loony in this game from time to time, but you don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. All right, can we... Yeah, all right, we're going to put it in low plus and throw the lockers on and see how that helps us get on through the mud. It's not doing too bad. I've really got to admit that this thing feels like a... It feels like a vanilla truck with slightly better tires. Now, does it feel like it disrupts the game balance? No, absolutely not. Like, you could use this thing all throughout your campaign mode, and I would honestly say that unless you are a dedicated purist that is like, no, I will only use vanilla trucks in my campaign mode, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, like, unless you are a dedicated purist, like, this is not going to hurt your vanilla game balance whatsoever. Like, this is going to fit right into it, no problem at all, you're going to enjoy it a bunch, and I think it's going to be just a great addition to your overall garage. I think you're just going to have a really good time overall with the truck itself. Now, this is going to be a really, really, really tight turn for the... Well, actually, no. It's not going to be a really tight turn. It's going to be fine. Put it into standard low. See if we can make our way out of here without sinking. It's kind of scrambling at the ground, but it's still moving. Like, the forward momentum has not ceased, you know? Like... It's slow, sure, but, like, I would rather have a truck that is, you know, making slow forward progress than a truck that is like, oh, yeah, um, we're gonna sink now. And some trucks do just straight up sink. This thing, not so much. This thing is like, okay, yeah, we're moving along. We might be going a little slow, but, I mean, just be patient and we'll make our way right on out. Like, what the? What? Um... What the heck just... Oh! I was like, did we hit an invisible wall? Because we were going along, and then the dang truck just stopped. And I was like, I didn't hit anything. Like, I know I didn't hit anything. Apparently, that barrel got under our trailer axles, and then the physics just completely deactivated. And it said, oh, yeah, by the way, you want to make forward momentum? <laughs> yeah, good luck. So... Putting it back into high range now, making our way down to the dips obstacle. This one we are going to attempt, and I don't think we'll have any issues with it from the truck standpoint, but I think we might have an issue or two from the standpoint of the trailer. The trailer might say, the, the trailer might be like, oh yeah, that, I'm out. <laughs> Alright, we're going to swing real wide, and ow, that was a bit of unwanted damage. Just not a lot of damage, but you know. That's a lot of damage. All right, come on. We may have to do some slight, like, diagonal uh, walking from side to side here. Come on. Here we go. Not bad. Like, honestly, not bad. I'm... Okay, I'm impressed. I Look at this. We're running a massive, massive lumber trailer through here, and... I mean, this truck is very well put together, like, genuinely so well put together. And honestly, like, it still manages to retain that feel of usable game balance. And to be able to do that and also retain that feel of usable game balance, bruh, I, I couldn't be happier. Now, let's go ahead and grab the high-range yeet time transmission. And, you know, when you throw the yeet time transmission into a truck, well, y'all know exactly what time it is. It's time for the bridge jump. The bridge jump being probably my favorite part of this test. I don't know why I hit the horn. I think it's probably because I was understeering off the road and I was frantically trying to get the truck back onto the pavement. It doesn't actually have bad pavement grip either. I mean, it, it, starts, to, it starts to roll out, really. So high range is about the equivalent of fifth out of eight gears, and you're really only going to get up into eighth gear, I think, whenever you're either going downhill 
or if you're running the truck without a load behind it. So, but fifth gear is plenty fast. Like fifth gear is, well, fifth gear slash high gear is, uh, is a good chunk of speed. All right, into automatic mode, kick the clutch. Let's see, sixth, seventh. Oh man, oh God, we are really picking up speed now. Ooh, it's actually kind of tricky to keep going in a straight line. Don't worry about it, we're fine. Dude, we only got like a quarter of suspension damage out of that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I, you know, you know, I got to hand it to this thing. Thing's a machine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, go download this truck. Go download this truck. You could scout in it. You could haul in it. You could do any number of anything in between in it, and it retains, that's the crazy part about this truck, is that it retains that stock game balance friendliness, but it also is able to do stuff like that and, like, not care. And with that being said and done, let me know any thoughts and opinions you may have in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I bit my, wow, I literally bit myself where I was literally in the middle of saying subscribe if you're new. But subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.